ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधश्य ज्ञानंजन शलाकाय चक्षुर तस्मे श्रे गुरु नम मुखम करोति वाचाला अंगुम लंघयते गिरी यत्कृपा तदहम वंदे श्री गुरु दिन तारणम ब्रह्मानंद माधो श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर नम ओं विष्णु पादाय कृष्णा प्रस्थाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नामस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सदे गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नाम संकीर्तन की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय इस कौन फाउंडर आचार्य हरी जी भाई कैसे भगवान की जय ऐसे मल भक्त वृंद की जय निताई गौर प्रेम नंदी हरि हरि बो हरे कृष्णा दंडोत प्रणाम टू एवरीबॉडी सो दिस इज द लास्ट मॉड्यूल एंड वी विल सी हाउ एवरीथिंग गोज नॉर्मली यू नो बाय दिस टाइम यू विल सी डिवोटी स्टार्ट्स काइंड ऑफ डिस्ट्रैक्टिंग एंड गेटिंग बिजीयर एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट सो वी विल सी आई एम uh not sure that uh, we'll have enough participation in every class but whoever will be coming and uh being part of the program and following the homework and doing everything will be done with the course remaining one might have to you know join the next batch or maybe find out a way to deal with it so with that uh today we are going to start chapter 2 from uh, the nectar of devotion and the title of the chapter is the first stages of devotion so we are basically following the bhakti samrita sindhu by rupa goswami and the way we will uh, basically follow is going to based upon uh summary that his divine grace has given in the nectar of devotion so that's how we'll try to uh, uh go through it i'm hoping that uh, it's building some good uh, learning if not then please you know ask questions as we are going through so uh, from last two three weeks we have been talking what is uh bhakti and uh <clears throat> bhakti's uh, definitions comes from one of the definition of the bhakti uttama bhakti comes from uh bhakti samrita sindhu anya abhilashita sunyam gyan karma adi anavritam anukule nu krishna nu silnam bhakti uttamam so uh we saw that mukha lakshan and then we also the primary symptom and the uh secondary symptom <coughs> of uh bhakti so with that you know we also talked that that definition of bhakti whenever uh we are using the word bhakti in uh, bhakti samrita sindhu we are always uh going back to that definition that we just you know uh finished uh last week so <clears throat> today we will start the second chapter and uh, <clears throat> there was little bit uh, remaining from the first chapter little bit discussion needed and then some of that uh, his divine grace has mentioned in uh, second chapter also so we heard about uh, a technical definition of pure devotional service but then the question comes that from where this devotional service comes and uh, <clears throat> this itself is a separate topic uh we'll have to 
go through the writing of other acharyas to understand what is the uh, source of bhakti from where uh, this opportunity even come like to all of us wherever whatever stage of consciousness we are in how that stage has come in our life okay brahman dvarmitte kono bhagyavan jiv you know we all are you know kind of moving around there are millions and millions and billions and billions of living being so how very few who are <coughs> uh, bhagyavan gets the opportunity to do the bhakti or even hear the very kind of refined class one definition of bhakti so this verse will give us some insight that from where it comes and it says that solpa uh, solpapi solpapi ruchi reva shad bhakti tattva abodhika yuktistu kevala naiva yadasya apratisthata a pratistha a pratistha pratistha and a pratistha solpa api ruchi reva so this ruchi does not mean the ruchi that comes in the stage of bhakti like uh, uh, ruchi stage you know anarth nivriti nishtha din ruchi so we are not talking about that ruchi here uh, bhakti asamta sindhu uh, here for the ruchi uh, it's been says that ruchi is basically some degree of faith some test okay not necessarily that stage of ruchi which comes after nistha so solpapi ruchir if one has a little bit taste for what shyad bhakti tattva bodhika tattva abodhika tattva is the means elements which abodhika which refers which which reveals the uh, bhakti if one has little bit ruchi about those elements which reveals bhakti then from there bhakti will start you know manifesting yuktis tu kevala naiva yadasya pratisthata not by yukti not by you know here uh, it's translated as uh, logic you know just by logic and argument one cannot basically come to the stage of uh, come to the stage where one will be ready to take the bhakti so if one will keep on arguing 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 one cannot you know uh, come one of the point you know we hear a lot that uh, <clears throat> some of the people who we preach they will come and they will tell you are you are trying to be you are talking like you are a pure devotee you know you talk like that uh, i know you are on the top of everything and you made it sometimes people say that it appears that you have made it but i see you know you have tons of problem you have tons of faults you know you have tons of things that doesn't make sense but you are teaching others sometimes people say that uh, why you are suffering why you have so many diseases you know if you are you know if you are if you are a devotee all of these things <coughs> people say but still one who has ruchi will not be distracted by it that matter you know what people are saying is still he will be form yes yes i have contamination where i am denying it i have problem where i am denying it but at the same time i do know that i am not there where i have to be or i have to go but i have that faith that one day i'll come to that stage and that conviction i don't know from where it has come to all of us i don't know from where it has come so it says here that the anyavilasita shunyam gyan karmadi anavritam you 
no pure bhakti has no other desire at the same time it's ahituki apartihata there is no condition for the bhakti it's not done for any other motivation so if there is no condition for bhakti then from here it comes okay and there could be multiple degree of you know explanation to understand but just to make it concise that bhakti comes from bhakti the, the root cause of bhakti is bhakti itself and some of the example that we can give is that agyat swikriti like for example you know one is uh, uh, you know uh, coming to temple and uh, we offer prasad and that person says wow i have been eating outside so many times but today what i ate was so tasty well right there you know although you are appreciating the material quality of the food but you know swikriti comes blessing comes you know sometimes associating with the devotee and saying that prabhu i don't know what you do but you know whenever you walk in dhoti kurta it looks very good you know there is one uh, neighbor from uh, south so in the evening when we walk she in me and my wife will walk chanting she says that you both have purified this you know area she says she says that you know i don't practice krishna consciousness but by seeing you both of you it reminds you know that i should also do more something like that some type of appreciation okay that appreciation right there you know create a seed you know create a seed of bhakti so that's what you know is being uh, talked here that life after life after many lifetime we have some impression okay of bhaktis appreciating taking birth in a family where from very childhood we have been given the opportunity although i might have a you know <clears throat> repulsion about it but still sometimes you know end up appreciating sometimes helping that's why we like devotee we want devotee to come and serve although even if you don't have faith come and help us that way they get the seed and that seed birth after birth you know turns into taste okay and then that taste help one to start engaging into the sadhana bhakti okay so now <clears throat> from here we'll try to understand what is sadhana bhakti and all of that but i just wanted to give you uh, some understanding that's mentioned here that bhakti comes from bhakti the source of bhakti is bhakti itself which is you know given by serving uh, or appreciating any limbs or any aspects of bhakti that is being performed and once uh, this impression of the bhakti and ruchi for bhakti has developed then then one can hear one can dwell some time give some time okay you know it's okay whatever i don't know if i'll be following the bhakti but you know if somebody is talking about bhakti let me hear or you know let me just go to hari krishna temple i know that you know they will talk so many things that i might not be able to take it but i'd rather go and spend my time in hari krishna than somewhere else so and then you know if you have that little bit then pure devotee will inject through their instructions they will inject like when maharaj comes or any pure devotee comes we all get the association why because they they will inject their faith and then our faith will increase so that's what he says is here the syat bhakti tattva abodhika okay one has that little bit ruchi for the elements which is going to reveal tattva abodhika which is going to reveal the deeper meaning of the bhakti and from there bhakti will start uh, manifest so one can come to this stage where one is even ready to uh, engage into the sadhana bhakti one has to have some of those basic you know element which is faith some degree of sadha has to be uh, there uh, bhakti samrita sindhu uh, has four part so first part talks about you know samanya bhakti so we cover we completed the first part the second part which is south ocean 
that uh, talks about general symptoms and uh, transcendental rasa and it has 16 chapter so we are going to start the second chapter today and by in the part four will be done with you know bhakti samrita sindhu so second chapter is talking about uh, sadhana bhakti so <clears throat> in the very beginning of uh, second chapter Prabhupada is saying that uttam bhakti all of three types which is sadhana bhakti bhava bhakti and prema bhakti sadhana bhakti is devotional service in practice and bhava bhakti is devotional service in ecstasy and prema bhakti is devotional service in love sadhana bhakti has two component vaidhi bhakti and raganuga bhakti vaidhi bhakti is devotional service according to the rules and regulations and raganuga bhakti is devotional service with greed with spontaneous love that has developed for supreme personality of godhead so at raga bhakti one has it now taste doesn't matter you know what people are telling me you know what you know, sickness and what trouble that i'm going through i will try to take some time out chant my round engage in the limbs of uh, devotional service raga Nuga bhakti so so we'll try to understand uh, that in detail we talked about six qualities of pure devotee pure uh, bhakti pure devotion and uh, you can see now if you see basically these three uh, types of bhakti sadhana bhava and prema we can see here that what is stage basically those uh, quality qualities manifest in ourselves so klesa agni and suhda that is by sadhana bhakti and then moksha uh, lagukrit and uh, sudur labha moksha lagukrit means you know liberation liberation appears very very minute very insignificant that would come when we are in the uh, bhava stage how difficult it is to do the bhakti <clears throat> that thing will also appear when we come to bhava stage and then the last two sandranand Atma, condensed please condensed feeling and uh, love concentrated love emotion for supreme personality of godhead will come in the prema bhakti stage and that point krishna personally get attracted by devotee so we also talked that it's not easy for krishna it's very easy for krishna to give the pure bhakti but giving uh, it's very easy for Krishna to give the moksha liberation, but giving pure bhakti is challenging. Why? Because Krishna himself gets sold out. Krishna, Krishna, you know, it attracts supreme personality of God. And Lord Himself is, you know, the Krishna uh, word means the one who attracts everything, and pure devotional service even attracts supreme personality of God. So these are, you know, different. Uh, qualities that manifest in devotee as we advance in our process of bhakti so one by one we'll try to get into the technical definition and these are the definition now going ahead in future if uh, you are uh, giving classes or uh, you are sharing that's the that's the real understanding you know bhakti means what we just spoke Bhakti always refers to Uttama Bhakti and Navilasita Sunyam. And what is Shadhana Bhakti? So here we are going to see the definition of uh, Shadhana Bhakti. Kriti Shadya Bhavit Sadhya Bhava Sa Sadhana Vidha Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatyam Hirdi Sadhya. So he says Kriti Shadya Bhavit Sadhya. Kriti Shadya means in devotional service, Kriti refers to the senses okay so when senses are uh, engaged the action of the senses which produce the stages of bhava sadhya bhava is called sadhana bhakti so when our senses are engaged in nine limbs of bhakti saranam kirtanam asmarnam padsevanam 
archanam bandhanam dasyam so all you know that uh, nine limbs that we hear when we are engaged through our senses then that sad bhakti the bhakti that we have been performing that help one to attain the bhava bhakti this attained state of bhava bhakti is an eternal a sthai bhava which is not created but simply manifest within the soul by the spiritual energy of the lord hridi prakatayam so when senses are engaged in following or performing the limbs of bhakti at due course of time a stage come which is called bhava bhakti and then from there basically it turns into prema bhakti so sadhana bhakti sadhana stage is one that lead to bhava bhakti so the point that being made here is that this uh, sadhana bhava or prema bhakti it's already manifesting in our uh, heart or or we have that quality already that inherent quality is already inside okay krishna bhakti sadhya ka bunaya saranadi suddha chitta udaya karaya okay so krishna bhakti is not new for living being it's already inherited in their heart but saranadi suddha chitta once we are engaged in in taking one two three or multiple limbs of the bhakti then the due course of time that bhava bhakti reveals so sadhana bhakti has what are the you know aspect of the sadhana bhakti sadhana bhakti the first aspect is that that it has action we are acting okay we are acting by controlling our senses and then it has a goal is it clear so so what is the what is the goal of sadhana bhakti who would like to say as per this verse so do most uh, devotional service yeah but what is the goal of sadhana bhakti where it leads us bhava bhakti bhava bhakti yes yes so sadhana bhakti yes sadhana bhakti we are engaged which means we have some actions to do and kriti sadhya you know by controlling the senses with objective with a goal and that goal is basically to come to the stage of bhava bhakti okay so the goal of sadhana bhakti is to help us come to bhava bhakti but in sadhana bhakti we are constantly anushilanam we are trying to in a very favorable way trying to act for krishna by controlling our senses with the goal to come to the stage of bhava so some of the points to be observed or can be you know uh, mentioned here is that bhava bhakti says that but simply manifest within the soul by the spiritual energy of the lord so bhava stage appears an example is given that a baby who is uh, you know walking and falling down has a potency to walk okay a seed a very good example can be given a seed seed has a potential of a tree okay if that seed is thrown on a barren land then it is doing nothing it will just stay there for some times maybe it will die but the same seed if it's transplanted in the soil in the soil then it will become seedling and it will become plant and a huge potential so the huge tree of the banyan banyan is a huge tree right so that huge banyan tree is hidden 
in the seed of that you know uh, that tree so likewise all of us we might not be in that bhava and prema stage but that is trans that's our inherent quality it's embedded inside us but how that will be revealed to us by sadhana bhakti another example is given that in your house there is a big treasure you know diamond or gold treasure in one of the room and room is locked out you don't have the key so in order for you to access that treasure that has been accumulated you need that key to open the door so that key is sadhana bhakti sadhana bhakti is very important because it will help us open that door and have the you know uh, access to those treasure that has been you know hidden so sadhana bhakti is always done with a goal which means advancement continuously you know if we have a goal and we have a process then that's a very well defined you know kind of a process i know where i have to go and i know what i have to do both of these things if we do then there will be a huge uh, progress so that's how uh, we can say sadhana bhakti so what we, what we can remember sadhana bhakti has action has some you know action is do's have to have the control over the senses that's don't and then we have the goal we have the goal and goal is that that we get I, to I have a question bro yes prabhu ji please yes so in the, in this sadhana bhakti there are two um, uh things one is the practice which is the um, yeah. vedi bhakti and the other one is the raganuga right yes prabhu so yeah. so is it is it a progressive uh, stage where you um have a you know practice first and then the spontaneity becomes and then you progress to uh, to bhava bhakti or it's a, it's a process which is you know combined and then you just move to the next stage and next stage and next stage so prabhu you are asking that is it a like a stage like a step by step progression yeah. yeah or is it or is it some other element that can also uh, factor in right because you know it looks like that these are these are stages different stages to me where you have to really practice first and then you develop the the attachment where you are doing the practices without any um first of all a spiritual master or guru is asking you to do those practices in the practice uh in the first one and then you become more spontaneous and then you only progress to the next ones and next ones so um this is a very good question prabhu in fact <laughs> this is very logical question also and uh, these are types of bhakti not necessarily a stage also how to understand that so there are some example in the shastra where we see that lord sometimes does the personal favor to the uh, devotee also so Uh, for example take the example of jagai madhai or dhru maharaj or there are so many in you know, example where lord personally does the favor to come to the prema bhakti stage so all this is a uh, technical layout that uh, how the successive progression will happen but not necessarily not necessarily one cannot come to the stage of prema bhakti unless and until you know he goes through bhava bhakti you know if the krishna desire or if guru will desire or some unconditional mercy of lord will come you might you know jump from sadhana to prema bhakti or even higher stages but we are not going to talk there are six i think six more higher stages after that so but for us prabhu ji that's very good you know in fact rupa goswami has mentioned that that one should see these items as a type of bhakti not a stage of bhakti so see that these are the types of bhakti and one can go from one type to other type from other type to other type and these each types have their symptoms 
So based upon your symptoms, you would know that you are in bhava bhakti or you are in prema bhakti. But, but everything has a but. But what will happen? The but is that that most of the time one has to engage in sadhana bhakti to come to bhava bhakti. But if it takes 10 years for me to come from Badi bhakti to raganuga bhakti, that doesn't mean that it will take 10 years for you also to come to raganuga bhakti. It might be six months. It might be two months yeah. that, that you will come to raganuga bhakti. And then in two months, bhava bhakti, and then you know next year you are in prema bhakti. So that that part is very much depending on yeah very much depending on the sincerity of a soul so in one life span prabhu you know that's why people sometimes we see people say that, oh i have very advanced stage now you know what should i do uh, can i still do the bhakti yes yes Does that matter where we start our bhakti if the sincerity is there seriousness is there then very soon we can become the year of Krishna. So, so that's how it can be understood. It's not basically that, like for example, you know, first class, you have to be one year. You pass the exam, then you go to second class, one year. You have to stay there one year for sure. Doesn't matter how smart you are, right? So those are a stage, but this is not a stage. This is type of bhakti. You know, once you fulfill the requirement of sadhana bhakti, then you are in bhava stage if you have those symptoms you are in the prema stage so some of that will vary depending on how sincere and how you know uh, <clears throat> dedicated we are for the whole process is it probably helpful or yes Prabhu, thank you so any question follow-up questions you have Prabhuji, on this one but this I is very good i wanted I to in fact mention that part but you brought it that's good i have a yeah. follow-up Probably. Yes, Prabhuji, please. Yeah. So, let's be clear. So once once you reach that next the Bhav Bhakti, it does you still continue to practice your sadhana bhakti though, because you don't stop, correct? Sadhana bhakti, in fact, never stops. That's what I thought. Yep, I just wanted to make clear clarification. But what happens is that, yeah, and it was very good. I want the type of discussions. It never stops. But but what happens is that here, sadhana bhakti for, and we are going to talk about that. Next slide, we'll talk. Here, when we are in a badi stage, we have to basically, like for example, we have to enforce the teaching of Guru, Shastra, and Sadhu. So we saw the definition here that says that, uh, uh, or we saw the only definition here. Let's go to this one. Yeah, here. It says that Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Sadhya Bhava Sha Sadhana Vidha. Okay. The Sadhana Vidha is basically the uh, limbs of Bhakti, right? So when we are in Badi Bhakti stage, for example, we might have some struggle. Oh, I don't want to, you know, get up in the morning because I have headache or I don't want to get up in the morning because I have some issues. I don't want to go to Sunday feast because, you know, I have to take care of my son. He is, has music class or dance class. So it's still there. We know that Guru Shastra and Sadhu. So the follow up, this, you know, I think that I wanted to share is that in Shadhana Bhakti, we are very much following the Guru Shastra and Sadhu, not having, not having our own test, but knowing that that test will come, but we are very much abiding with Guru Shastra and Sadhu, you know, Shastra says that Sansara Dava Naralidha Loka, this material world is a, you know, fire. Is it a fire for me? Am I burning right now? No. But Shastra is saying that everybody is burning. So with that conviction, one will engage in Badi Bhakti and then they will come to Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga stage is the stage where now the rules and regulations are not necessary for you. Rather, you have already greed you know, a perfect example is all the gopis and gopas, all the residents of, you know, uh, Brindavan. They not necessarily chant 16 rounds, but they have the result that comes out of Badi Bhakti. Okay, so at any stage, and I'll summarize that with one slide. At any stage, we are not stopping chanting the name of Krishna, not stopping serving the Krishna, but the impetus, Currently, somebody is uh, knocking on the door. But the impetus that comes to do that activity, 
that changes. So right now in the very beginning, our impetus is that Guru, my spiritual master is asking me to do it. My impetus is that I have to do it. But at some point, we'll have the grid for it. And we'll see what is the impetus in Bhava stage. We'll see the impetus, you know, impetus in Prema Bhakti. But at all of these stages, we are following the Bhakti. But the drive to do that will change. Is that good enough? Thank you, Prabhu. That was wonderful. So, sadhana bhakti, badi bhakti, and raganuga bhakti. So, now let's get to the uh, next slide here. And we saw the definition, technical definition of sadhana bhakti. And we said that sadhana bhakti means, you know, we have to have some action. Action is very important. And then some dance, which is controlling the senses and the goal. Goal is that, that we come to the stage of bhava bhakti. Then <clears throat> we are. Uh, here it says that sadhana bhakti means trying to engage our senses and mind in practice of devotional service. Okay, such as child learning to walk. That's a very good example, right? We are we don't know how to walk, but uh, you know we are trying to uh, walk. We know we are teaching. Okay, stand up hold the finger. So Badi Bhakti, that's what it does. It helps us, you know, start walking. Another example is given that caring of a man who have mental disease. You know, some have a, some person has a good, you know, mind, some other it got, you know, a disease, now it's being cured. So that's what oh, Sadhana but, Bhakti is. Prabhuji, is it a spelling mistake, Prabhu? Is it Sadhana Bhakti or Sadhana, is it Sadhana Bhakti? It should no. It should be sadhana. S A D H A. Yeah, S A D H A N A. D is missing there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sadhana bhakti. Sorry for that. So it's sadhana bhakti. Let me change it. So it's sadhana bhakti where we are engaged, and then that give rise to bhava bhakti. Okay. So this is a flow. We have to have some action, and that action should have the goal, and goal is bhava bhakti. So sadhana bhakti now, as we uh, just saw a few minutes uh, before, that badhi raga nuga cheti sa dvidha sadhana abidha. There are two types of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti that is uh, that is abiding with rules and regulations. That's called badhi bhakti. And then when we have the mature love for Krishna, that's uh, Raganuga Bhakti. Or when we have greed to serve or engage in devotional service, that's Raganuga Bhakti. Okay, but Badi Bhakti is very, very important for us. Most of us are uh, uh, following Badi Bhakti. So let us try to understand the definition of uh, Badi Bhakti. Badi Bhakti as defined in of devotion, Bhakti Samrita Sundhu. He says, Yatra Ragana Yatra Ragana Aptvat Parabhritir Upajayate Sasnaiva Sastrasya Sha Badi Bhakti Ruchati. So the verse itself is explaining everything. Yatra Ragana Aptvate. I mean, the where there is yatra, where there is no raga, there is no spontaneous love for Krishna. Parabhriti upajayate. Everything is being done by by some rules and regulations. Parabhriti upajayate. What is impetus of driving us? Some rules and regulation. Sasnaiva sastrasya. Okay, following sasan. Sasan means you know ruling. By what? Shastra. Prabhu, you will have, maybe I can do that. I can, I'm hearing some uh, noise. So, Sasnaiva Shastrasya, Sa Badir Bhaktir Ujjate. What is Badir Bhakti called? Badir Bhakti is that where there is no spontaneous, spontaneous love. There is no Raga, Apnavati. There is no, uh, you know, pure love for Krishna has developed. But we are engaged, Prabhupada We have engaged in serving because of some rules and 
regulations such as by following the instructions that's coming from Shastra. So in Badi Bhakti, Guru, Shastra and Sadhu are the impetus. So what is driving us to take the Bhakti Shastri? What is driving us to do whatever we are doing? At this stage, either it's a spiritual master, our spiritual master saying that, you know, you can't get second initiation until you have the Brahmin, you know, uh, until you have the Bhakti Shastri. That's Guru impetus. Or, or Shadhu. You know, saintly person is saying that no, 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 no. Please do bhakti, do bhakti. Bhakti will, you know, help. So guru shastra and sadhu. So guru sadhu and shastra. Shastra says Krishna says that bhakti mama vijanati. I don't know Krishna. I don't know who knows Krishna. I don't know how that person feels who knows Krishna. None of those things are, you know, clear to me. But one thing for sure, when I read that particular statement, Krishna says bhakti mama vijanati. All of, you know, people are trying to know me, but the only one who knows me is my devotee. So, dear devotees, the main impetus, the main driving force at the Badi stage is Guru, Shastra and Sadhu. Okay, but by uh, abiding and staying as Badi Sadhaka, at due course of time, you know, we'll have our own greed, own love for Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that will become Raganuga Bhakti. Chetodrapna Marjanam Bho Mahadavagni Nirvapanam. Okay. By cleansing a mirror that has layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of dust. We can't see our face. But once that cleaning process has happened, when all the dirt and dust has cleaned out, <coughs> then we can see ourselves. That's what is Badi Bhakti. Badi Bhakti is, you know, process of cleaning. So we should not be, you know, compromising with it. Our seriousness is basically following the limbs of Bhakti. We have been ignoring it. If we want to come to the stage of Raghavan Yoga, we have to take the Badi Bhakti, you know, uh, very seriously. So what happening here now? So Badi Bhakti has all the aspect of Bhakti. Anya Vilachita, Sunyam, Gyan, Karmadiya, Navirtam, Anukulenu, Krishna, Nu, Silam, Bhakti, Uttama. That aspect is there. Okay. And it has also the aspect of Sadhana Bhakti, Kriti Sadhya Bhavet Sadhya, Bhavasa Sadhana Vida, Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya, Prakatyam Hirdi Sadhyata. That aspect is also there. And on top of that, we have the step that we, or the aspect that we just gather here, which is, which is by the Parvulitri Upajayate. The desire that has come inside us that has come by the instruction of Guru, Shastra and Sadhu. So, so let's, if you go back, Guru, Shastra and Sadhu instructions should be followed by engaging in devotional service with full control of our senses. One should try to serve Krishna without any other desire with only one goal that how I can come to Bhava Bhakti. Okay, so if you put all of that together, Badi Bhakti, Sadhana Bhakti, Bhakti, all of that together, that gives a very well-defined, clear guideline that how one should proceed in the Bhakti. No other desire, no other motivation, nothing else. By engaging our senses in the Naudha Bhakti, following the instructions of Guru, Shastra and Sadhu, with the goal that one day we'll come to the stage of Bhava Bhakti. Okay, so that's how basically we can conclude the definition of Shadhana Bhakti. Okay, and then <coughs> Prabhupada continues keep on building and we'll just uh, talk a few more uh, you know, verses to conclude. But that's the essence. The essence is that, that we have to very clearly understand what is the uh, meaning of Badi Bhakti. And when we say Badi Bhakti, take the aspect of Bhakti, take the aspect of Sadhana, 
and the aspect of Madhi. All three put together, that gives a holistic definition for us to execute and follow in our uh, life. So further, what is Badi Bhakti? We will see some definitions of Badi Bhakti as it's been given at other places. Raga Hina Jana Bhaje, Sastre Na Gyan, Badi Bhakti Bali Tare, Sarva Sastra Gaya. So those who have not attained the platform of a spontaneous attachment in devotional service, render devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master according to the regulative principles mentioned in the revealed scriptures. According to the revealed scripture, this kind of devotional service is called Badi Bhakti. Badi Bhakti Bali Tare Sarva Sastra Gaya. What is that Badi Bhakti? Badi Bhakti is one where one does not have Raghina. One does not have a spontaneous love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How we know that? Salva, you know, he says that Gyana uh, Bhaja uh, Sastra, uh, all the Sastra is saying that. Badi Bhakti Bali Tare Sarva Sastra Gaya. All the scriptures are saying that. That Badi Bhakti is one where one does not have a spontaneous love for Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here is another reference where Sukhdev Goswami is being instructed. <coughs> Sukhdev Goswami is giving instructions to Prakrit Maharaj. He says that Tasmad Bharata Sarvatma Bhagwan Ishwaru Hari Srutavya Kritavyasya Asmartavya She Chetavyam O descendant of King Bharata, in this case Prakrit Maharaj, one who desired to be free from all miseries must hear about glorify and also remember the personality of Godhead, who is the super soul, the controller and the savior from all miseries. So here the essence that we have to take this, you know, basically talking about some aspect of Navada Bhakti. But the point that we have to note here is that the one who desire to be free from all miseries. So we have a desire any intelligent human being has a desire right to be free from any misery right the bhai you know the mathun right the defense suraksha atma suraksha these are some of the symptoms all living being has that everybody you know wants to protect themselves has a hunger has a desire you know and defense okay so we all are defending in one way or other way but it says here that if one really wants to be free from all misery then one must all the time remember Krishna and engage into the process of devotional service so it says that that the solution of all the miseries or Badi Bhakti it says that engaging ourselves in Badi Bhakti that will help us come out of any uh, suffering that uh, we are seeing. Then, here is another verse here that says that uh, Asmartavya Satatam Vishnu, very famous verse, very famous verse. Asmartavya Satatam Vishnu, Bismartayona Jata Sut, Sharva Bidhi Nisedha Shyor, Eta Yoreva Kim Karaha. So Kim Karaha means uh, servant. Kim Kra means one who follows. So, Asmartaya Satatam Vishnu, always remember Krishna. Bismartaya Najat Sut. The goal of life is that one should never ever forget Krishna. So, that stage, that stage is very high stage. Okay. So, our goal is to come to this stage where we always remember Krishna and we Never forget Krishna. Sarva Vidhi Nisedha Ashur. All the methods and methodology and rules and regulations are Etayur Eva Kimkara. All of those are servitude to these two fundamental statements that's being made here. Always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. Okay, so I need to go back here. So in Badhi stage, we can't always remember Krishna. Okay, but once we have come to this, uh, you know, uh, Raganuga stage, then according to this verse, it says that that uh, everything else, everything else is servitude to it. That means that that 
that the stage of constant remembrance of Krishna is the goal. And if we have come to that goal, or that should be our goal. If you know that goal, then we have technically understood what is the Bhadi Bhakti, what is the Raganuga Bhakti. Okay? We understood what is Bhadi Bhakti, we understood Raganuga Bhakti, we understood the Bhava Bhakti, but we did not understand the goal of all of that. It's very beautiful, very beautiful. And what is the goal? Asmarta Vesatatam Vishnu. If we haven't come to this stage, and Bismarthi on a jat suit. We haven't come to this stage that Ekalai Swar Krishna Arasava Bharya, you know, the only worshipable Lord is my dear Lord Krishna. Everybody else is Bharya. That's what it says, Kinkara. Everybody else is serving him. So that's the goal. Very technically, in uh, Bhakti Samrita Sindhu, Sarabha Goswami is citing this verse and telling us that this is the goal. This is the goal where we have to come. We have to come to this stage where we never ever. In fact, uh, uh, this is uh, cited in Chaitanya Charitamrita. The original source of this verse is Narad Pancharatra. So it's cited here for us to understand that goal of everything is to always remember Krishna and never forget Krishna. And then <clears throat> Uh, Bhakti Asamrita Sindhu also says the same thing, which is coming on behalf of, uh, you know, Narada Panchata. It says that, O Devarisi, all activities prescribed in the scriptures with the Lord as the object are called Bhadi Bhakti. By this performance of Bhakti, one attains Prema Bhakti. Okay. So, the Bhadi Bhakti can lead to Prema Bhakti. So, what we are trying to uh, mention here, that one thing that very important, to mention that sometimes you know a uh, devotee who are following Krishna consciousness uh, if they are not matured enough or if they haven't you know studied Shastra systematically they are just hearing here and there you know they get the impression that our Acharyas have not given us the Bhava or Prema Bhakti our Acharyas have not given us the you know higher stage of Bhakti you know, but they have emphasized too much on Bhadi Bhakti. Yes, yes. Our Acharyas have given everything. Yes, our Acharyas have given, you know, Bhava Bhakti. Our Acharyas have given... Prabhu, yeah. Prabhu, yeah. Your, uh, your audio just dropped. Okay. So oh, there you go. It's better now? Thank you. Yes, Prabhu. So, so thinking that uh, we don't have a uh, complete process is not right understanding because... Bhava Bhakti will uh, lead to Prema Bhakti, but Bhadi Bhakti will lead to Bhava Bhakti. Okay, so by engaging in the limbs of uh, Bhakti slowly and slowly, you know, one will be coming to the Prema Bhakti. Okay, while we are doing uh, Bhadi Bhakti, the <clears throat> Gorya, you know, Madhva Sampradaya, Brahm Madhva Gorya Sampradaya has given. Uh, the process in a way that uh, although you are following the limbs of bhakti as a badi sadhaka, at the same time it gives the opportunity to practice bhava and prema. For example, for example, you know, just by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra is badi bhakti. But thinking that name of Krishna is Krishna himself. That means each and every syllable of Krishna that we hear receiving Krishna. That's 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 bhava stage, that's very high stage. Now we have emotion attached to what we do. Okay. So even we are doing the Badi Bhakti when we do for some love, when we do some you know, for when we do it, some you know, when we do it for some greed, then we are practicing the higher stage at the same time too. But the problem is that that is sinusoidal. Sinusoidal. When we are in the association of a devotee, we just want to do bhakti, and all the good quality in a devotee will reveal. But as soon as we get into a association of the worldly-minded people then their quality comes. So that's what, you know, we have to 
uh, stop. What we have to stop is that Asmartayam Satatam Vishnu come to the stage where Asmartavya all the time we are in the remembrance of Krishna. Study, study in our bhakti. Okay, but don't think, and that's why the question that Asuk Prabhu was asking is very important. If you see them in a segmental way, oh, I can come to Bhavaya says only when I cross Badi Bhakti. It's not like that. Okay, it's given us to understand a mapping. Okay, and we'll understand as we go along. Okay, but while we are engaged in Badi Bhakti, we can put our bhav. We can put our emotion. We can have expressial emotion. My dear Lord, you are everything. You know, love. Okay? So not very much in a robotic way. Rather, doing with some how. So that's basically what Prabhupada is talking. And then the last part of this uh, chapter, uh, there are description about uh, four Varna, such as Brahman, Chaturya, Basya, and Sudra. Brahmans are the one you know so we're talking about the bhakti right so bhakti is transcendental to this varna and ashram okay but but this varna and ashram can be ladder can be a stepping stone to come to the stage of bhakti so brahmana are the one who are preaching on behalf of the lord and who is eating also on behalf of the lord bhagavatam says that lord eats through the mouth of a devotee, okay, and Patan Pathan is an Ajan is the duty of a Brahmana, okay. So, so reading and talking about Krishna, preaching about Krishna, that's the Brahmanical duty. Chatriya is the one who protect people from onslaught of Maya, and in this particular, you know, example, so Prabhupada has given the example of uh, Parikshit Maharaj. That while Prakshit Maharaj was king, when he saw a, a, a man torturing the cow, he became very aggravated and he, he you know, expelled that person out of his uh, jurisdiction. You know, so that's the dharma of a Kshatriya. Basya has a cow protection, agriculture and trade. That's their, you know, uh, uh, duty and Sudra has to serve the higher, you know, uh, portion, Vaishya, Chatriya, or Brahman. Prabhupada is saying that, uh, but that structure does not, you know, exist in Kali Yuga. If that, if that structure exists, then the whole world will turn into Bakunta. But then, don't worry. Don't worry. You know, we don't have to start where we fall into Shudra or Basya or Chatriya or Brahman or which quality do I have? Am I Brahman or Chatriya or Basya or Shudra? Oh, I am Shudra. I have to be Basya and then Chatriya. No. Prabhupada says that don't worry for anything. All of these Ban Prastha, all of these Varnasram symptoms, Varnasram ladder that's given, the purpose of all of that is to come to the stage where we are engaged in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know, the purpose of everything is to come to the stage where we are simply engaged in Krishna consciousness. And if that uh, engagement is there, then our life is perfect. You know, that will make everyone happy and peaceful. We will be happy and everybody else will be happy when we are engaged in the process of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so that's Prabhu. how. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, we'll I take some. Question. Yeah, I have a yes, so, yes, Prabhuji, please. So, so, Prabhu is, so Prabhupada is, or in the, uh, or uh, Sri Rupa Goswami is talking about this in Nectar of Devotion or Prabhupada, or the Varna Ashram. It's because to show what an example, but of how a structured society would function if it was uh, Krishna conscious or, or is it because I, 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 my understanding, I, I'm, I can never quote anything properly because I don't have that good of a memory, but my understanding is if you're a dis devotee chanting Hare Krishna, engaging in the serve, devotional service, you're 
your this Varna Ashram system is not relevant. Is that correct, or everyone's? So, so uh, that's a very good point. Very good point. So, Varna Ashram system is uh, very relevant because uh, depending on uh, where we are on that ladder of faith, like there are many people, Prabhuji. Uh, in order for us to preach them, we have to preach them goodness, right, Prabhu? There are many people who will be more attracted to goodness than directly worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like charity, doing good for others, right? So, but doing charity and doing good for others is also for the purpose to come to the stage of pure devotional service. Okay, so if you have come to the stage of pure devotional service, then then you have already fulfilled all of these requirements. So you are preaching, you are a Brahmin, okay? You are eating prasadam, or you are eating, you know, on behalf of, you do everything, all, you know, we have a gosala, you know, all of that. So, and not only we are limited to these four, but we are doing beyond that. So, so here the, the way we understand is that these things are relevant. Sudara has to come to Vaisya stage, Vaisya has to come to Chatriya, Chatriya has to come to Brahmana. Prabhupada is saying that in age of Kali, that structure has broken. If that structure itself set up, then after Brahmana, what one will do? For sure he will become Vaisna, right? So this structure is kind of a you know, manufacturing, you know, environment where slowly and slowly people will be turning into a best now but since that structure has broken now everything has become you know chaos a lot of problems but Prabhupada is saying that if one has come to the stage of Krishna consciousness then he is fulfilling all of this uh, requirement so okay so that's but, but that's... this is still relevant relevant okay. for the people who who needs to come through this ladder okay because you know, in your in the homework, you at the last question you ask is why Srila Prabhupada speaks about Varna Ashram so much in the in this chapter. Yes. yes. And it, is that why? Just to show an upper, a way for some people to progress versus being in in full devotional service. Is that me? What were you talking about? For people to uh, progress, people to progress to the stage of pure devotional service. Okay. All right. Thank you. That helps. So, Prabhuji, that's a very good point. Somebody has to, somebody has to be ready to take uh, this definition. Kriti sadhya, bhavet sadhya. What is sadhana bhakti? Or even, you know, the bhakti of pure devotional service. Somebody has to be willing to hear it, right? Correct. Yes. So, so only the person who has surpassed, who has come to this stage where he has some faith. He's ready to hear, right? Yep. That person can hear, but there are people, you know, who are below this uh, Varna Ashram system too. These are the four Varna, but we have people who are Chandalas, right? Four, fifth class, sixth class, seventh class, eighth class, ninth class people, tenth class people. So people who are tenth class people, for them, if we help them set up or establish in Varna Ashram, then there is higher chance for them to become best now. So for 10th class people, it is very difficult to directly, you know, promote that person to best now. But a Brahmana can be easily switch to the position of the best now. So that's basically kind of a ladder to help one come to the a stage of devotional service. Thus, Krishna consciousness movement is so important that there is no need of designation, such as Sudra, Baisya, Chatriya, Brahman, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Banpasta, and Sanyasi. Let everyone be engaged in whatever occupation he has, but simply engage in Krishna consciousness. That will make everyone happy and peaceful. Okay, yep. so yeah, so so goal is to come to this stage. Asmartaya satatam Vishnu, Vishmartaya na jatasud. If we do everything else, but we don't come to this stage, then it's going to be very very difficult. Even in the society today, probably the whole India is divided on these these four worlds. You know, Sudra, 
yeah. and Brahmin. Brahmin when, would even today they don't want to you know come under the shadow of a Shudra people. Prabhupada is saying that all of this, even if you have it, there's no point if you don't have love for Krishna. Well, yeah, because when, in reality in Kali Yuga, everyone is a Shudra. Yeah. Or but lower. It, yes, yeah. yes. Mostly yeah. Sudra. Sudra is still in a Varna system, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. Becoming Sudra is not bad. Yep. No. Because no, Sudra, I mean. but Sudra is still in a Varna system. But we have people, fifth grade, sixth grade Chandala and Mahachandala. Yep. Sure, sure. Yep. So for them, if we can bring them to the uh, Varna, that will be really nice. And then slowly they will come to a stage of doing the devotional service. So it's very important to have some understanding about this Varna system because the purpose of this Varna system is to transform one consciousness to devotional service. Any questions? That's good. We want some more discussion. That way, you know, I'm saying things with some assumptions, and if the assumption itself is not uh, correct, then it's always good to ask why this thing has been spoken like that. Is it helpful, Prabhu? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Prabhu, I just want to add a few points that you said. Yeah. Today morning in one of the lectures, like Prabhupada lectures, while some devotees asked about, you know, it's very famous lecture about um, saying that Krishna consciousness is brainwashing and doing stuff. So in one of the um, lectures, Prabhupada uh, was saying about um, like when India was uh, under British rule, Mahatma Gandhi named uh, a group of people as Harijan. You know, uh, I still today, yeah, I still today. Yeah, I still is today. There. So that's what Prabhupada was saying, like. Um, and don't call them Harijan because everyone, all the living entities are Harijan. Harijan, Harijan yeah. means they are close to Hari. Yeah. So every living entity is Harijan. But uh, only like Prabhupada was giving an example, uh, like analogy of like how nowadays, like we just give a rubber stamp and just leave it like that. Like mm. uh, uh, he just gave a rubber stamp of Harijan and but nothing was done, you know, to uplift them or uh, do that. Then uh, also Prabhupada was saying about uh, he gave an, like in one of the lectures, Amoglila Prabhu, he was telling mm -hmm. about like the candle marches that goes on now. Like something bad yeah. happens, they do the candle march, then the people says, okay, now we are done, it's 6 o'clock, take your tea and samosa and you are done. So that's what he was explaining, like um, people like in Kaliuga, we know we all are Shudras, like compared as even like uh, not even uh, equal to Shudras. We are we can call like my I can call myself even lower than Shudra because uh, that's what like, uh, but uh, yeah, everybody has uh, classified that uh, like they don't follow the Vanashram Dharma of this like four divisions. But they have classified that into their um, how they have taken birth. So that's what the definition has changed, like for normal uh, people today, like the people who are ignorant, like those who don't, those who don't read shastras and everything. So yeah, just remember that point. Like yeah, we point. shouldn't just put the rubber stamp and leave it. So much, about. so much exploit, uh, you know, exploitation yeah. happens on the name of Varna. Sarapadi binur muktam, tatvarate na nirmalam, rishike na rishike sa, sevanam bhakti, vichyate. You know, what is a bhakti called? Sarapadi binur muktam. You know, so don't get up, you know, don't, don't get tied up with all of this designation. Sarapadi binur muktam. Leave everything and then engage your senses in the service of Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is master of all the senses. So, yeah, Hindu, uh, you know, Hindu dharma has uh, been misutilized, or this whole Barnasram system has been misutilized by our Indian system. Because people were not studying Shastra, they were not trained in understanding, rather it became family business, and hose pose, taking from here, taking from there. Uh, it's very important 
to if you want to help yourself here hearing is very good but read too much hearing so many places you know people share things in different different context sometimes i would say something based on the context and that should not be my prime you know message that i should be sharing rather you know read 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 you know read by yourself try to understand shastra what you know other acharyas are saying and with the help of devotee come to some conclusion so right now it's very important as our society is growing that we study our acharyas otherwise what we are going to give it to our generations what will give we will give nothing so yes mataji uh, this this whole varnasram system in india has been completely misused brahmin you know they eat everything they still say that they are brahmin they are better than sudra how come krishna doesn't say that you know krishna says that you know the varnasram system is basically varnasram vibhagsa you know it's basically based upon the gun and karma and swabhava so it's it's not somebody's birthright and they would not accept you or i or ram gosur prabhu as a brahman or best you know you know best now they will so he is born in western country so he is not uh, you know best now but technically he is the best now that's why prabhu pad said that you know all the devotee who have come from west and they are they are already you know devotee in previous life and they have they have helped uh, you know uh, mahaprabhu they are all associates of mahaprabhu and they have been scattered around to help me so so we have to see technical definition of bhakti you no know? now the definition of that bhakti that we see with that definition how many people who are going to the temple and saying that dhan sampatti ghara ave sukh mitai tan kaum jay jagdish hare is doing bhakti mataji who would like to share are they are they doing bhakti om jay jagdish uh, i devoted as some of the people Most to say the that people go for like showing off yeah <laughs> yes yes a yeah, lot of people they go for like okay on one what do you do on sundays uh, we go to temple yeah. okay what do you do in temple we just go temple and spend some time mother ji i was once in a hindu temple <laughs> there was some program and i saw that there were few people few ladies she had some birth there was something she was dressed up so well and all she did outside picture you know picture with her husband picture with her baby mother never and i don't know even see god inside the temple or not all she did is like i was watching outside you know we had this bangladesh incidents so i was there to just support and i was just outside uh in my car and i was watching that lady one hour here like this here like that i'm not criticizing you know i'm not criticizing i don't know who she is and all of that how strong devotees she is but but that's what it is you know so so much superficially uh, you know bhakti is happening so this dismissal is not to criticize other by the way the, you know this was presented so that we can do introspection of ourselves and see that if we have those impurity we take it out that's the goal the goal is for our you know benefit and whoever is our you know uh, <clears throat> close associates or close people who wants to hear you know who, who has faith in our guidance in our instruction we tell them that bhakti means this not that many people would not buy they think that you know uh, puja is bhakti but puja is not bhakti dharma is not dharma arth kaam moksha bhakti is beyond dharma arth kaam and moksha this is you know panch purushartha so these are some of the things and bhakti rasamrita sindhi will help us understand those things very well i request all of you that all of these definitions i know that uh, we are sharing you are seeing those but read please you know not only for homework but to understand there are a lot of things you know prabhupada is saying in the purport and also uh, you know uh, read the uh, bhakti samrita sindhu if you have by rupa goswami and learn these things that will give a very solid foundation for you to become a bona fide leader you don't know tomorrow what what will come in your way if you become a spiritual master or you become a leader and you yourself are not confident to share some technical fact i i don't know what i'm saying is true or not it happens unless and until we haven't you know done a study thoroughly 
so in future also for you to be a bona fide you know preacher as a leader as a guru or whatever you are aspiring to be it's important that this is the time that we preach Prabhupada a lot you know volumes and volumes of books but when he was of our age all he did is study nobody knew Sri Prabhupada so all of us has to study focus on understanding the aspect of Krishna consciousness and then make a matured kind of you know uh, Krishna consciousness so with that I would like to conclude here I went 13 17 minutes uh, extra anybody has anything that they would like to share okay so we'll chant best not pronounce Vanjikal Pata Ruvhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyaya Varsha Patitanam Pavani Vyaya 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 Namu Namah Shambhal Bhakti Vrindi Ki Jai Anant Kuti Vyaya Vrindi Ki Jai Itai Gaur Pimnandi Hari Hari Bol Thank you Hare Krishna Dhanavad Pranams I'll see you all Thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hari Bol Thank you for keeping your camera on Hari Bol Prabhu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Mataji Hare Krishna